I'm always ready for a good old debate. And this debate is, who had the better career? Brett the Hitman Hart or the King of Kings, the Cerebral Assassin, the game, Triple right. H? Don't, don't get me started because, yo, <laughs> there are a lot more memorable Bret Hart moments out there than, uh, than Triple H. Because all we can really say is, hey, man, do you even remember the time Triple H was on SmackDown? Do you? And I mean through 2009. Do you, D? Do you? Wasn't didn't he have the spinner belt? Didn't he have the spinner championship or something like that? Yeah, he did. He I think did. I, I think I kind of remember that because like he came back from an injury or something like that. Well, that's what I'm getting at though. It wasn't memorable. He didn't do anything. Hmm. Okay. And then um, he did all that build up just to lose to Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. Huh. It's kind of crazy how that circle of belts happened. It goes from Randy to Triple to John. God dang, man. Mm-hmm. But then to get back on track, though, my thing about Triple H is though he has a lot. He has a longer career, but there's a lot of just moments where nothing really happens. And if not, it feels like they gave him the belt because there was no one else to give it to, or this is how the cerebral assassin gets his way. And he has the belt just cause. And I remember Triple H's reign of terror. He was supposed, supposedly, that belt was supposed to go to, uh, to, uh, what's his name? Booker T. Okay. But it went to Triple H. Still, they let the bad guy, the bad guy races at the, at the time, win at WrestleMania, which was crazy. And then on top of that, mm-hmm. At top of that, though, as we continue down the storyline, Triple H's matches, it seems like Triple H is only good when he's the side piece in the situation. Side piece, okay. Because that's how I feel about it. And then, you know, and then when you, if you look at it, let's look at Evolution. It was really more the shenanigans of Ric Flair, and then Triple H has to have, his, have something to say about the situation, then they get into it. And then everybody has to piece up everything. And then you see the true stars of Rebel Evolution, which was Randy Orton and Batista. And then if we skip forward and we look at the DX situation, well, guess what? Shawn Michaels was really the show. Hmm. And then we look at, and then on top of that, let's look at it again. Even in Triple H's own retirement matches against The Undertaker, why is Shawn Michaels here? Why does Shawn Michaels have to be a factor in this man's match? Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Triple H is just, like I said, he's just the side piece, man. If you look at Bret Hart, literally the keys were given to him, and Bret Hart was pretty much wrestling prestige at that point. He has had matches with people who cannot wrestle. He's had matches where he had to literally carry drunk people through a match. British Bulldog. He's had matches to where they were so good that they can't help but to put them on and make them wrestle in history. In fact, I'll tell you like this. People had to fight to give him the belt due to the fact that he was the chosen one. He was that dope. In fact, he was almost the thing that killed the WWE because he got injured. And he got injured by Goldberg. But let's just look at it like this. If he didn't get injured, WCW might be around still. Mm, okay. And the thing and the biggest thing about Bret Hart is Bret Hart was also a, one of those guys that were good in the ring. He had signature moves. He was actually dope at submissions. So good, in fact, he was telling The Rock how to do the sharpshooter correctly. That's how good he was. And that's one of The Rock's specialty moves. Crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and on top of that, if you look through his history, though, he's had matches with legends in and out of business, like Hulk Hogan. He's had matches with, you know, God, I forgot his name, actually. He was a big sumo wrestler. That was actually Samoa. I forgot his name. Man. He's talking about um, uh, what's his name, Yokozuna. Yeah, he's actually Samoa, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, but yeah, Yoko, he had matches against Yokozuna. <laughs> but that's his name. That he's had... <laughs> yeah, he went to sh- he had legendary rivalries with Shawn Michaels. He had the Heart Foundation. The dude has a really good stored career and then if you look at him he has the Hart family dungeon where they wrestle in there that's way better than Paul Levesque coming from the suburbs just wanting to wrestle yeah I dropped his government name I did that 
My question is, are you finished? Because I'm about to break down everything you just said. Okay, I'm going to throw in one more thing. One more thing. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't married to Stephanie McMahon, do you think Triple H would still be around? Um, I think so. I think so. But you bringing up the marriage is already... See, you... You, look at this. I'm about to I'm about to tear down everything you just said because at the end of the day, <laughs> think about this. Who career would you rather have? If you come from having nothing to do with wrestling, right? You didn't have a family that grew up in wrestling like Bret the Hitman Hart. You didn't have a family in there. You had to pursue wrestling on your own. You had a dream and you had to go after that dream. And then let me tell you this. You go after that dream and then you become one of the biggest superstars of all time and then not only that you marry the owner's daughter and then not only that you become you become a leader of the company that you're actually helping young wrestlers become who they are the the next big superstars of tomorrow he runs nxt tell me that is not the american dream tell me that is not the american dream and bret hart Though he's a legend, though he's one of the greatest of all time, I can't take nothing away from Bret Hart. But that being said, Bret Hart career ended very sadly. I'm sorry, I, we got to admit it. And maybe a podcast, we got to break down for a different episode, the Montreal Screw Job, And that would be a, a very good podcast to kind of break down and see whose side would you on. Were you on Vince McMahon's side or on Bret Hart's side? But that's a whole nother story for another day. Bret Hart career came to an ending that was beyond or not the way he wanted it to end. Triple H is still helping run the company. He went from a wrestler to being in the front office. Tell me, is that not the American dream or the dream you would want to have with the company you're pursuing after? And then to marry the, the daughter, the owner's daughter? Come on now. And then we could talk about the stables. You mentioned Evolution, but who was the leader of Evolution? It was Triple H. You mentioned DX. Shawn Michaels was the leader, but then Shawn Michaels had to retire. Who took the leadership role? It was Triple H. Oh, no, no. Then you talk about Triple H. Who did he help put on? When we talk, who did he help put on Batista, Randy Orton, two of the best wrestlers from this past generation? Like, come on now, who helped put them on? That was Triple H. Triple H did that. He used his fame to put on that young, to put on them, the young talent. Well, Triple did blanket for Jeff Hardy. 14 time up, champion. Yeah. I was gonna say, if you ever look up the like the uh the backstage stuff, Triple H did uh he caped for a uh, for Jeff Hardy back in the day. What does that mean? You mean what like literally he was influencing stuff so Jeff Hardy would be in a better position. Mm. Okay, see? Look at him. Now you putting you you now you now you starting to see the light. Now you starting to see the light. No wonder why he's taking not care really, of the young because talent. guess not really cuz guess what Bret Hart did. What? He put he put Benoit on, but guess who else he put on? Stone Cold Steve Austin. I can't, in a very risky match. I can't argue that. He definitely helped put Stone Cold and give him that push and put him on. But come on now. Let's talk about the rivalries. Triple H would have some of the greatest iconic back-breaking matches with Mick Foley. Cactus Jack. We could talk about the Rock rivalries. We could talk about his rivalry with The Undertaker that you mentioned that did have something to do with Shawn Michaels. But... It's because this all was a story that was tied together. Triple H is Shawn Michaels' best friend. Undertaker retired Shawn Michaels. Triple H had to defend Shawn Michaels' honor because Shawn Michaels couldn't wrestle anymore. And Triple H continued that story. Oh, let's think about this. How about Triple H in China? How about Road Dog and Billy Gunn, the outlaws? How it's so much I can say. What about what about Stephanie McMahon? Wait, wait, how about wait, how, how did, wait, what did you really bring up them two clowns, <laughs> Road Dog and Billy Gunn? You mean them dudes who only lasted like two weeks in the WWE? 
I'm joking, oh. man. Two years. <laughs> Did you really bring them clowns up like that? Did you really? I think the only thing special about Road Dog is he knew how to spell his name correctly. That was the only thing. And then let's not forget X Pac. X-Pac, which is X-Pac. No one knows what the heck X-Pac's ever did. Let's not even bring that up like that was even significant at the least. We, we had two can, very interchangeable parts. Can man. we talk about his entrance, though? How many people you know would 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 do the same thing Triple H do? Put the water in the mouth and then spit it out. Come on now. That's Triple H. Hold on. Are you really defending that? Because I know if he spit on you, you'd be throwing the hands. Let's just not Co- defend that but at all. But it's not about if he spit on me. It's about how many he influenced to do the same exact thing, to put the water in their mouth, to wait till the, the beat drop, and then they spit out the water. It's Triple H. Come on now, the DX. Come on now. I mean, no, because I'm going to be like this, man. At least with Bret Hardy at the swag. Walking out there with the purple shades on, man. God dang. You know why? Because he has a better action figure. A Simpsons action figure at that. How about the sledgehammer that Triple H made famous? Oh, you mean the one he never gets to use? Oh, yeah. The sledgehammer. Let's get that out the way real quick. Every time he has to hit somebody with sledgehammer, his hand has to be in the way first. Come on. The man is called the King of Kings. Not really. Because he's... Let's look at it like this. Triple H wants to be the best, but he can never be the best. He's actually like this. He's actually, in my opinion, the people's chump. Because guess what? Mm -hmm. Every time he wants to be the best, he has to go beat on someone or have to influence a way to get to where he wants to be. And every time he wants to go face the best, he always loses. Every single time. 14-time champion. And I could tell you this. He started off as a wrestler, but he's now the executive vice president tell me that is not the american dream tell me that is not the it, career you would want or do you want your career to end the way it ended for Bret hart and that, hey it's sad i sad i'm sorry Bret. i'm sorry it's very sad that it ended that way <sighs> but hold triple h's career is still continuing on as we speak he can come back and wrestle that, at any time he wants that is true that is true but let's look at it like this Every time I notice Triple H does get a title match, somebody has to interfere or he has to get a goon of, pe- goon of people, like literally some goons, just to go gank somebody and win the belt. This happens more often than not. It happened to The Rock. It happened to Shawn Michaels. It happened to, what's it called? It happened to even Orton, actually, as I think about it. It happened to even Benoit. It happens to any time like Triple H wants a belt. He has to get get like a legion of goons to go after somebody to go get that belt. Mm-hmm. And then they, those are his his pretty much his wall right there. Mm-hmm. And then to what happen, happens? They turn on him every single time. It even happened against the three way match where Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and John Cena. Guess what was the first move? Shawn Michaels, Sweet Chin, me and Triple H. First thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Or let's bring up the time that Batista wanted the belt and went directly after him. Or let's bring up the time he that... put on Batista. That's why he put on. Batista. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. But then let's look at it like this. What about that time Shawn Michaels came back to WWE and then got the belt? What happened? Triple H and his goons ganked them again. Because he's the he he was the best heel in the company at the time. That's what he's supposed to do. WWE needs more uh, heels right serious? now. The best heel in the company. He was the best heel in the company yep. when Stone Cold was walking around and Brock Lesnar was just getting started. Stone Cold was, tell me. was not a good heel. And then, Nobody wanted to boo Stone Cold. Nobody. On that was of one that. of the worst switches ever. Okay, okay, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. But, 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 but. I'll say this: Jericho was a way better heel, in my opinion. But oh, you got to pull. Oh no! Oh my goodness! Chris <sighs> Jericho's great. He is not Triple H. He is not Triple H at all. You're right. He's better than Triple H. Oh, right. no, okay. This debate will never end. But I want to just <laughs> say this: shout out to both of them. They both legends to me. Shout out to Bret Hart and nothing but love, and shout out to Triple H. But that being said. Triple H is better. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> this man. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but that being said, let us know in the comment section. Let us know 
uh, who do you think won that debate? And tell us who do you agree with? Tell us if you who had the better career, Triple H or Bret Hart. Let us know. All I got to all I want to say is the pedigree is the wackest finisher I've ever seen in my life continue. Oh, my goodness. Triple H put on some phenomenal matches. The pedigree is classic. Classic.